Hi everybody, we're in section 4.6, Algebra 2. We're looking at Kramer's Rule. Kramer's Rule gives us an opportunity to solve systems of linear equations or systems of equations um, in two, three, four variables, kind of indefinitely, honestly. And we do it by only looking at what I've highlighted here, these coefficients and these constants. And what we're going to do is we're going to find a particular array or way of organizing them such that if we find the determinant of the organized information, we can actually find the value for x and y. So this should be exciting or tiresome. We'll see. All right. So here we have our key concept. So if you're looking for a solution of system of linear equations, like in this form, kind of like what we just had, here's what you have to memorize. Got to memorize these determinants, like if you wanted to be able to apply this anytime. So what does this mean? It looks like a lot of gobbledygook. Let's break it down. So if the equation I was working for, the equations, were 3x plus 2y equals 7 and 5x minus 3y equals 1, if this was my situation, in order to solve for x and y, I'd have to calculate some values of certain determinants. And the determinants can be found by using the formula. Well, yeah, I guess formula is what we call it, using the formula here. So to find x, I'd need to use these two values on top of each other, create um, a, a determinant or a matrix where I have EF and then BD. Notice that the columns that we're referring to are the ones that do not include x. So when I look at my problem, I know that I'm going to have 7, 1, and 2, negative 3. Also, before we keep going, notice that this, the, in order for this to work, you have to organize your um, linear equations or your system in this order, x, y, and so forth and so on. So just make sure and keep note of that. All right, so if you want, pause me and try to guess what the denominator down here should be. It's going to be not the answer portion, right? You notice it's a, b, c, d. So we're going to have 3, 2, 5, and negative 3. Cool for us, the other denominator is going to be the same thing, 3, 2, 5, and negative 3. And this numerator up here, now because we're dealing with the y, we're going to kind of ignore the y section, right? We'll ignore the y section. And it tells us that we will use a, e, c, f. Yeah, a, e, c, f, yes. So 3, 7, 5, 1. 3, 7, 5, 1. And since last the last section we like were all over determinants and we were able to figure them out quickly. I know you guys can do this. So here we are at example one. We're going to talk about using Kramer's rule to solve this system. Notice that everything is lined up exactly the way it needs to be, the way we mentioned before. And so this would be our A, B, C, D, E, F. And we know that we're going to have to find three different matrices. One or th I'm going to call them determinants, three different determinants. So there's going to be a determinant for x, a determinant for y, and then the random big determinant. Let me move this over here. And so now what I'll do is I'll set it up. I'm going to see if I can do it from memory. What I remember is that if you take this part off, right, the part with the x, you will write down the answer values, and then you'll write down the coefficient of the y's, right? So let's check that out really quickly. Let me erase this nonsense. And yeah, E, F, and B, D, good. And to do this y value, to figure out what the numerator of the y um, answer would be, or that determinant, I'm going to do the same thing, but instead, I'm going to get rid of the y's and I'm going to put it down exactly as I see it, 5, 2, and then 13, 13. And again, I'm going to glance back and see if my memory holds correct. And I see that I've done a good job. Ignore the y values here. Let me scratch that out just for you to see it. And A, C, E, F. All right, cool, cool, cool. So you see that I'm trying to memorize it. I need you to try to memorize it too. All right, that's the expectation. All right, and then so the next part is A, B, C, D. And I remember that from before, right? So the answer was not included. These answers weren't. So 5, 7, 2, negative 5. And so now we got to do the determinant thing. So calculating this value, we'll multiply 5 times negative, 13 times negative 5 to get a negative 65. And then we'll multiply 13 times 7 to get a 91, to get a 91. So that's going to be minus 91. 
joining these guys together, we're going to get a negative 156 as the value for this determinant. I'm going to just box that off there. We're going to do the same thing here. Multiply down. That's positive 5 times 13. And then I'm going to subtract up 2 times 13. So 5 times 13 minus 2 times 13 is going to end up giving us 3 times 13, right? Does that make sense? No? Yes, maybe. So 3 times 13 is going to give me 39. So the value of that determinant is 39. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go down, multiply, get a negative 25. Um, up, multiply this guy, we're going to get a positive 14. 25 plus 14, a negative 25 plus 14 rather, is going to give me a positive 11. And that's exactly what I would put down if this were correct. I should not have said that. So negative 25 minus the 14, my bad, is going to give me a negative 39. Are you guys with me? I'm sorry I ruined your confidence. All right, so let's go back and figure out what we, what we know. We knew that x was supposed to be the ratio or the fraction created by dx and the general d denominator function. And then I'm just calling it the denominator function or denominator, uh, de denominator determinant. All right, and then y was created by dy and d. So now we're just going to figure out what those ratios are. So I've got negative 156 over negative 39, and I have 39 over negative 39, which is very easy for me to calculate. That's just negative 1, yay. So one of my ordered pairs is negative 1, and this other one I'm going to have to do a little bit more work. If I divide 13 into this, I get 12. Negative 12, I divide 13 into this, I get negative 3, and therefore negative 12 divided by negative 3 is 4. Woohoo! So that's my answer. All right. I was going to do example 2, but I think I'm going to skip it because I did something a little weird. So forgive me if you saw that little glitchy thing. Here is what we need to work on, and this is going to take us a little bit of time, so we need the time in the video. Here we go. Kramer's rule for three variables. Here it is, people. If you've got an x, y, z, you're going to have to find one 3 by 3 determinant, another 3 by 3 determinant, another one. And thankfully, all of these down at the bottom are the same. So we're going to try to see if we can memorize how to put this together. So when I look at this, I might feel a little bit overwhelmed. But the cool thing is I only have four determinants to figure out. The second thing is there is a pattern here. If I were to, to get the numerator for, well, first of all, to get the denominator determinant, Watch this, A, B, C, A, D, E, F, G, H, I. That's cool. Just ignore the answer and use that kind of as the problem is given. So that's cool. The next thing I need to do is now figure out how to get X, Y, and Z. To get X just like last time, if I ignore the column with the X values, I'm only going to be using the columns that are left. The answer column first, J, K, L, then the Y column, B, E, H, and then the Z column, C, F, I. To get the C, I mean the X, the Y determinant, Lord, children, I don't know what I'm doing. To get the Y determinant, babies, what I'm going to do is cross out the Y terms. And then I'm going to just take it almost as it is, A, D, G. Then I'm going to go to the answer, J, K, L. Then I'm going to go to the Z term, C, F, I. After I've done that, in order to find the Z determinant, the numerator of the z, the z answer, right? What I'm going to do is cross out the z values. And now I'm just going to take everything in order. So there was a mixing here, a mixing here, but the same idea of crossing out the value. I know it's kind of hard, but let's see what we can do. So example three, we're going to use the technique of, of Kramer's rule to solve our problem. So let's go ahead and come up with the matrix, well, the determinants that we need to come up with. The first thing we need to do is make sure everything is lined up correctly, X, Y, Z order, everything's cool. First thing I'm going to do is come up with the general denominator de um, determinant. I don't know why I'm having trouble today. So we're going to do 3, 1, and 1 for that first equation, negative 6, 5, and 3, and then 9, negative 2, and negative 1. Are you guys with me on that? You see how we do All right, so now that we have that one, let's go ahead and get X. I remember that I have to ignore that, write the answer column down. So that's negative 1, negative 9, 5, and then write the Y coefficients, 1, 5, and negative 2. Write this down, the coefficients of Z, 1, 3, and negative 1. And I'm going to continue the same way. Remember what we, what we talked about last time. We looked and we said, oh, to get the Y determinant, 
we cross out the Y and I believe we write down the, let's go ahead and see, the Y determinant, we, we're going to write down the X coefficients, then the answers, then the Z coefficients. So X coefficients will come first, 3, negative 6, and then 9, then the answers, negative 1, negative 9, and 5, and then the Z coefficients, 1, 3, and negative 1. Finally, for Z, we're going to do the X coefficients, the Y coefficients, and then the answers. So the X coefficients, again, would be 3, negative 6, and 9. Y coefficients, let's go ahead and unscribble that. The Y coefficients are 1, 5, and negative 2. And then the Z, the Z co coefficients we skip. And then we get negative 1, negative 9, and 5. Woo, guys, this is a lot of work. I want you to be able to do this. However, I also want you to be able to use a calculator to do it as well. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to calculate one of the determinants by hand, and then we're going to ca calculate the rest using Desmos, all right, or an online calculator. I'm using the diagonal calculation method. I rewrote the first two columns, diagonals down. You just add those guys together, whatever those quantity are, diag quantities are, diagonals up we are going to subtract the resultant quantities. So I'm going to put a parenthesis here, a pair of parentheses, and I'm going to put the sum in here. And so I get these values. 15 and 15 is 20, plus uh, 10 is going to give me 38. Minus 25 plus 6 is going to give me 31. And then 31 plus 9 is going to be 40. When I subtract these two, I get negative 2. The value of this determinant is negative 2. I bet you guys just want to see me do it, don't you? You want to see me keep going? I'm going to keep going. So here are the values we need to get. And now we're going to do a little bit of math. This becomes negative 30. And over here, this becomes, this is going to be a negative 36 minus 6 is going to be a negative 42. But I'm going to be adding that 42 since it's negative, negative, right? And then I end up with a positive 12. So the value for this determinant is 12. We got to do it again. Let's go. Oh, I can't tell you how many minutes are between our pauses, but let's keep going. I'm fighting, babies. 75 minus 81 is going to give me a negative 6. Negative 6 plus 12 gives me a positive 6 minus all of this stuff here. Negative 45 plus 54 is going to be a positive 9. And, and yeah, positive 9. Positive 9 minus 30 is going to be a negative 21. Negative 21 minus so I'm doing minus a minus 21, right? It's really plus a 21. So I end up with 27 here. So 27 is the value of this determinant. One more, one more, babies. Let's go. All right, so doing the same diagonal calculations up and down, I got that this determinant's value is negative 9. All right, guys. So we're, we're about to bring it home. I promise, I promise. So the value for x is going to be uh, dx over d, and dx, the determinant is negative 2 over negative 9, which is a positive 2 ninths because those negatives cancel each other out. y is going to be 12 over a negative 9, which can reduce to a negative, let's say, I don't know, for me, 4 thirds. So and so and so, I am stressing because I rewrote this column wrong. And all the work I did, I came up with the wrong answer. And so 27 is not the value. Let's see if I can find my mistake. Negative, negative times negative times negative is going to give me a negative going down in this direction. Um, 6, 2, 12 is a negative 12. So this is a negative 12 here. We're almost there, guys, I promise. This was a negative 6 minus 12 is going to give me a negative, negative 6, negative 6 minus 12 gives me a negative 18. Now I'm adding negative 18 plus 21 and I get 3. The determinant value here is 3, and therefore z, I, I lied to y'all, I'm telling you stuff that's not true, is going to be 3 in the numerator here over this negative 9, and I'm going to get a negative 1 third. Oh, my goodness. Do one of these. Your assignments, you've got a couple problems like this to do. Just do one, and then you can go online and look up Desmos and do and use that to determine your um, matrix values when you're dealing with the 3 by 3s, okay? All right, babies. Whew. I'm sweating. I need a rest. Listen, I'll talk to you guys later. Let me know if you're having as much difficulty as I am when you're doing your one three by three problem by hand. And um, let me know if there's any questions or concerns. All right. Look forward to talking to you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye.